Hello everyone, Sneaky Panda. In this tutorial, I'd like to share with you a few techniques that you can use to increase your damage output with various weapons. Uh, the techniques do vary quite a bit in their practicality as well as how difficult they are to execute, but I have quite a few of them to go through, so let's just hop right in. So the first technique that I'd like to show you guys is known as the QQ Cancel. So this is a conflagration staff, and I'm simply going to spam left click. And you'll notice that each time you fire, the staff recoils. There's a period of time where you're not able to fire again because the staff is going through its recoil animation. Now the way to skip this animation is to switch to your melee weapon and switch back. The default keybind is Q. So in order to QQ cancel, light attack, press Q twice, and switch back. Now right there, did you see I'm meleeed? That means I'm doing the pattern too quick. So in order to find the maximum rate of fire for a given weapon with the QQ cancel, just slowly increase the rate that you repeat the pattern until you see your melee weapon come out. And then you know what the, the maximum rate of fire is for that weapon. So this is uh, a fireball staff. So as a point of comparison, I'm showing you the baseline rate of fire uh, simply by spamming the left mouse button. And you'll notice that the speed that you can attack using the QQ cancel is significantly faster than with the con flag. And again, finding that timing just comes with practice. It's a little difficult to execute in combat, but uh, take it as you will. The next technique I'm including more just for the sake of uh, completeness. I think most people are familiar with this technique, uh, but it's called the block cancel. So if you simply light attack with a given weapon over and over and over, you'll notice it does a set pattern of attacks over and over. But every time you block, it resets to the first attack in that chain. And that's very useful for certain weapons versus certain types of enemies. So for instance, with the halberd, if you are fighting against a horde, you'll notice that the second and third attack in the chain are more like stab attacks. They don't cleave as much, that is, they don't uh, swing horizontally through as many enemies. So with a halberd in specific, you want to light attack and block cancel because that attack will hit more enemies. That being said, this is what it looks like to block cancel with a two-handed hammer. So this is if you are trying to damage a single target. And this by comparison is how quickly you can attack if you QQ cancel. Same thing goes with the con flag and the fireball. Just slowly increase the speed until you uh, have a misfire, sort of like that. Now this is something specific to Slayer, since it's the only class that allows you to have a melee in both slots. Uh, but instead of doing a QQ cancel, you just do a Q cancel. Uh, this one's definitely sort of in the realm of uh, a bit silly, but it is really fun to do. The same is true for quad axes on Slayer. The attack speed is pretty silly, but I can't see anybody doing this consistently during melee fights. But this pattern does give you a significant move speed bonus. The next technique is called the chain cancel. And as far as I'm aware, it only works on the falchion. Uh, so this is what it looks like if you just do normal block cancel. Uh, where you light attack, light attack, block. The reason being with the falchion is because the first two attacks in the attack pattern are horizontal swings. So light attack, light attack, cancel is the pattern that you want to be using with the falchion versus hordes. So the reason this trick only works with the falchion is because it has an instantaneous block animation. When you block, it doesn't go through the whole animation. You can kind of tap it and it'll just start to tilt it. So all you do is on every other swing, you block and attack simultaneously. So it's light attack, then left click and right click simultaneously. The next technique is called active reload and the timing uh, and effectiveness of doing the technique changes from weapon to weapon. So this is what it looks like, just the base rate of fire, spamming left click. And to active reload, you simply tap R once after firing. You can also just spam R, but it's not necessary. And again, the timing changes from weapon to weapon, so you can see the distinct difference in fire rates when active reloading versus not on the crossbow. Again, its effectiveness varies from weapon to weapon, so I'm going to show you some where the active reload is significant. 
for the blunderbuss, it's not quite as noticeable, so I'm going to start by doing active reload, and then I'm going, if you watch the mouse and keyboard, I'm going to stop pressing R, and I'm just going to switch to spamming left click. Listen to the time between firing and the beginning of the reload sound. The next one I'll mention is the repeater pistol for Salt Spire. Same thing, I'm going to start by first doing active reload, and then I'll stop and just listen from for the amount of time between firing and the start of the reload. So this one's really, really significant. Next up is the finger roll, and this applies to charge attacking with ranged weapons. I'm going to start with the con flag, and I'm going to hold right click and spam left click. And this is as fast as you can draw your patches. By comparison, when you finger roll, you want to let go of right click for just an instant in time before pressing it back down again. It's really tricky with wizard because your attack speed actually changes. It slows down as you approach the maximum heat. But you can see it's extremely fast with the con flag. And this pattern is extremely useful if you're attempting to stun mass amounts of elites or chaos warriors. The same pattern also applies to the Hagbane. Now the Hagbane arrow has an impact damage and it has a dot and there's a radius over which that dot is applied. And the both the impact damage and the radius is larger for the charged attack. So whether or not you're shooting into hordes or you are shooting at bosses, you want to be charged attacking. So same thing, I am going to start by holding right click and spamming left click. And then I'm going to show you the difference in attack speed when using the finger roll. So I like to think of this as holding right click, then pressing left click, and then releasing right click. And it's it takes a little bit of practice, but if you just watch the timing of the mouse a few times, you should be able to get it down. I'm not certain of the practicality on the current patch of this trick, but I recall this was what people were doing on beta to nuke bosses, so I figured I would just include it. And you'll notice that the rate of fire is significantly faster. It's basically just the reverse of the Hagbane. And you can see by the mouse it's a little weird because you don't need to, like remember I said before that you, for the Hagbane you hold right click, then press left click, then release right click. With this one, the timing seems a little bit less harsh and you can let go of left click before right clicking. So it's, it's a little weird. The last tip I have for you guys has nothing to do with dealing damage, but it is still an important thing to know nonetheless. And that is that you can use your ultimate during the middle of a revive, which is extremely helpful for trying to pick up your teammates in sort of clutch scenarios. Another thing you can do is start a heal and then use your ultimate and finish your heal. So here my buddy is gray health versus a boss with a grimoire. So I'm going to walk up to him, I'm going to start using a med pack on him, and then I'm going to ultimate to put myself into safety and then finish the heal afterward. So that is going to do it for this tutorial. If you did enjoy what you saw, I do live stream on Twitch. You can follow me at twitch.tv slash sneakypandavt. If you have any ideas or suggestions for what to include in the next tutorial, uh, that would be much appreciated. That aside, I hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. The Barden Pass continues to talk. Now. No more Kruber. It's just how it is.